Hello everyone. Today we will study differential equations. A differential equation is an equation that contains derivatives. For example, dy over dx equal to 2xy. This is called differential equation. In this equation, it contains the first derivative dy over dx. Another example, 2y prime plus sy equal to, 5, equal to 5x. That's another differential equation. In this equation, it contains y prime, the first, the first derivative. So they are both called differential equations. Another example, y double prime plus y equal to 2. That's another, that's another differential equation. In this equation, it contains y double prime. That's another differential equation. Another example, y double prime plus 3y prime minus 4y equal to 0. That's another differential equation. In this equation, it contains y double prime and y prime. So they are all called differential equations. The first and the second equation, they are called the first order differential equations. They are called the first order differential equations because the highest derivative in this equation is the first derivative. And the second and the third and the fourth example, and the third and the fourth examples, they are called the second order differential equation. They are called the second order differential equations because the highest derivative in both equations is the second derivative. They are called the second order differential equations. In general, solving differential equations is very, very complicated. So for this class, we only focus on the simplest case, the first order separable differential equations. For this class, we only focus on the simplest case, the first order separable differential equations. Note. In general, solving differential equations is very, very complicated. So in this class, we only focus on the simplest case. We only focus on the simplest case. The first order separable differential equations. In this class, only focus on the simplest case. The first order separable differential equation. What does it mean, the first order separable differential equation? Let me show you an example, you'll see what does it means. Let me show you an example, and you'll see what does it mean. First example, dy over dx equal to sy. This is the first order differential equation because the highest derivative is the first derivative. Now, why it's called separable? Why it's called separable? Think of this. If I multiply both sides by dx, I get dy equal to xy times dx. Now, if I divide both sides by y, if I divide both sides by y, I get 1 over y dy equal to x dx. Now here, I separate x and y. I write x on one side and y on the other side. 
in the, in the differential equation, if I can separate x and y, put x on one side and y on the other side, this is called a separable differential equation. If I can write x on one side and y on the other side, this is called a separable differential equation. Once I separate x and y, next, I take integral on both sides. Take integral on both sides. On the left side, if I take antiderivative, I get ln of y. On the right side, if I take antiderivative, I get x squared over 2 plus c. When we take antiderivative on both sides, only sc on one side, make it easier. Only sc on one side, usually sc on the right side. Next, solve the equation for y. Next, solve the equation for y. In order to get y by itself, I try to cancel ln. So I apply e on both sides. Apply e on both sides. Then, left side can be rewrite as absolute value of y because e cancels ln. On the right side, by the law of exponents, it can be rewrite as e to the power of x squared over 2 times e to the power of c. Since c is a constant, e to the power of c is another constant. In general, we run a constant in the front. Now, if this is absolute value of y, that means y could be either positive or negative. If this expression is absolute value of y, that means y could be either positive or negative of this expression. And we know that here, e to the power of c is a constant. So plus or minus, plus or minus e to the power of c is a constant. So y can be rewritten as k times e to the power of x squared over 2. where k is plus or minus e to the power of c. So that's the final answer. y equal to k times e to the power of x squared over 2, where k is either positive or negative e to the power of c. That's the solution to this differential equation. That's the solution to this differential equation. Now, how can we check the answer? How can we check the answer? How can we check if this is a solution of this equation? How can we check the answer? In order to check the answer, we take derivative for this function and then plug in. So, next, let me show you how to check the answer. Let me show you how to check the answer. If you want to check the answer, take derivative for this function y is k times e to the power of x squared over 2. If I take derivative, dy over dx is k is a constant multiple, it stays the same. Derivative of e stays the same. Okay, e to the power of x squared over 2. Then times the derivative of, of exponent, which is x. So dy over dx can be rewrite as k times e to the power of x squared over 2 times x. Let's divide over dx. Now, so in this equation, we know that left-hand side is this. Left-hand side is divide over dx. Equal to k times e to the power of x squared over 2 times x. That's the left-hand side of the equation. What's the right-hand side? Right-hand side is x times y. Y is this expression. Y is k times e to the power of x squared over 2. Here we can see that left-hand side and right-hand side look exactly the same. So here, left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. That's how we check the differential equation. 
So this is the answer to this differential equation. This is the answer to this differential equation. That's how we check the answer. Next example. dy over dx equal to e to the power of x times secant of y. How can we solve this equation? First of all, how can we separate s and y? How can we separate s and y? I can first of all multiply both sides by dx. I get dy equal to e to the power of x times secant y dx. I can first of all multiply both sides by dx. Then I can divide both sides by secant y. Next, I can divide both sides by secant y. I get 1 over secant of y dy equal to e to the power of x dx. Now, what's 1 over secant of y? We know that 1 over secant of y is cosine of y. So we get cosine y dy equal to e to the power of x dx. Here I separate s and y. One side separate s and y, take integral on both sides. I get cosine y dy equal to integral of e to the power of x dx. Next, take anti derivative on both sides. Take anti derivative on both sides. On the left side, if I take anti derivative, I get sine y. On the right side, if I take anti derivative, I get e to the power of x. In general, x constant to the right to the right side. X constant c to the right side when we take integrals. When we take integral on both sides, usually take x constant to the right side. Next, solve the equation for y. Here, in order to get y by itself, I apply inverse of sine on both sides. I get y equal to inverse of sine times e to the power of x plus c. That's the solution of this differential equation. That's the solution of this differential equation. Next, how can we check the answer? If we want to check the answer, we try to plug y to this equation and try to verify that left side equal to the right side. Let's check. Left hand side is dy over dx, which means we take derivative for y. If we take derivative for y, we have 1 over square root of 1 minus e to the power of x plus c squared. And by chain rule, times the derivative of the inside, we get e to the power of x. That's left hand side. Next, let's try to verify on the right hand side. See if they are the same. Right hand side is e to the power of x times secant y. What's secant y? For secant y, I can replace y with this expression. I get secant of inverse sine of e to the power of x plus c. Now, how can we simplify this expression? In order to simplify this, this expression, we try to make substitution. Let theta be what's inside, be the inverse function. Let theta be inverse sine of e to the power of x plus c. Let theta be inverse sine of e to the power of x plus c. Then that means sine theta equal to e to the power of x plus c. That can be rewrite as e to the power of x plus c over 1. Next, draw a right triangle. Draw a right triangle. Also, ang angle theta is here. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's an opposite. That's a hypotenuse. Sine is always opposite over hypotenuse. Next. Use Pythagorean theorem for the missing side. If I use Pythagorean theorem, the missing side is 1 minus e to the power of x plus c. 
left the missing side. If I use Pythagorean theorem, that's what I get here. Next, what we have here is e to the power of x times secant theta. Since inverse sine of e to the power of x plus c is theta. And secant theta, secant theta based, based on this triangle, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. I get 1 over square root of 1 minus e to the power of x plus c squared. So here we can see that left side and right side, they look exactly the same. So left side, left hand side equal to the right hand side. We check the answer. This is the solution of this differential equation. Next example, dy over dx is x times y squared plus x plus y squared plus 1. For this equation, how can we separate x and y? In order to separate x and y, we first of all factor on the right side. First of all, factor on the right side. On the right side, I can factor by grouping. If I pull x, I get y squared plus 1. Then I can pull out y squared plus 1. If I pull out y squared plus 1, I get x plus 1. So factor the right side first. Next, separate s and y. I can first of all multiply both sides by dx. I get dy equal to y squared plus 1 times s times s plus 1 times dx. Next, I can divide both sides by y squared plus 1. Next, I can divide both sides by y squared plus 1. I get 1 over y squared plus 1 dy equal to x plus 1 dx. Now I separate s and y. Next, take anti derivative on both sides. Take anti derivative on both sides. I get 1 integral of 1 over y squared plus 1 dy equal to integral of x plus 1 dx. Take anti derivative. Left side is inverse tension of y. Left side is inverse tension of y. Right side is x squared over 2 plus x plus c. Only a constant on the right side. Next, to look at y by itself. Try to get y by itself. I try to eliminate the inverse of tension. So I apply tension on both sides. I get y equal to tension of x squared over 2 plus x plus c. That's an answer to this differential equation. That's a solution to this differential equation. Next example. y prime is 2xy plus y times e to the power of x. Now here, y prime is the same as dy over dx. y prime is the same as dy over dx. That's another, that's another way to write dy over dx. On the right side, I can factor y out. If I pull out y, I get 2x plus e to the power of x. Next, we try to separate s and y. Next, try to separate s and y. I can first of all multiply both sides by dx. So I get dy equal to y times 2x plus e to the power of x times dx. Next, I can divide both sides by y. I get 1 over y dy equal to 2x plus e to the power of x dx. Next, take integral on both sides. I get integral of 1 over y dy equal to integral of 2x plus e to the power of x dx. Next, take anti derivative on both sides. Take anti derivative on both sides. On the left side, I get ln of y. On the right side, if I take anti derivative, I get 2x squared over 2 plus e to the power of x plus c. 
Next, I can cancel two from top and bottom. Now, try to get white by itself. How can we get white by itself here? I try to eliminate LN here, so I apply E on both sides. If I apply E on both sides, I get E to the power of LN of Y equal to E to the power of S squared plus E to the power of X plus C. And here we can see that C is a constant, so separate variable and constant. On the right side here, by the law of exponent, can be rewrite as e to the power of s squared plus e to the power of x times e to the power of c. On the left side, e cancels ln. We get absolute of y by itself. Then, since absolute of absolute of y equal to this value, that means y by itself equal to plus or minus e to the power of x squared plus e to the power of x times e to the power of c. In general, since e to the power of c is a constant, we put it in the front. In general, since e to the power of c is a constant, we put it in the front. So run the constant in the front. We have e to the power of c times e to the power of x squared plus e to the power of x. And we know that this is a constant. e to the power of c is a constant. Plus or minus e to the power of c is also a constant. So what can we rewrite this? k times e to the power of x squared plus e to the power of x where k is plus or minus e to the power of c that's the solution to this differential equation that's the solution to this differential equation next example Two y square times y prime equal to sine x. How can we solve this, this differential equation? First of all, y prime can be rewrite as dy over dx. Y prime can be rewrite as dy over dx. Next, I can multiply both sides by dx. I can multiply both sides by dx. I get 2y squared dy equal to sine x dx. Next, take integral on both sides. I get integral of 2y squared dy equal to integral of sine x dx. Next, take anti derivative on both sides. Take anti derivative on both sides. We get 2y cubed over 3. That's on the left side. We get 2y cubed over 3. On the right side, if I take anti derivative for sine x, I get negative cosine x plus c. Now, solve an equation for y. Next, solve an equation for y. I can first of all multiply both sides by 3. I can first of all multiply both sides by 3. I get 2y cubed equal to negative 3 times cosine x plus 3c. But 3c is another constant. c is a constant. 3c is another constant. So don't worry about, don't worry about c. Don't worry about 3c. We can write it as c. c is a constant. 3c is another constant. We can leave it as c. Next, I can divide both sides by 2. I can divide both sides by 2. I get y cubed equal to negative 3 over 2 cosine x plus c over 2. Again, since c is a constant, c divided by 2 is another constant. We can leave it as c. Next, take cube root on both sides. Take cube root on both sides. y equal to cube root of negative 3 over 2 cosine x plus c. That's a solution to this differential equation. That's a solution to this differential equation. Next example. x plus 2sy 
times y prime equal to 1. How can we solve this differential equation? First of all, we can rewrite y prime as dy over dx. Next, we try to separate x and y. We try to separate x and y. So I can first of all subtract x from both sides. I get 2sy dy over dx equal to 1 minus x. Next, I can multiply both sides by dx. I can multiply both sides by dx. I get 2sy dy equal to 1 minus x times dx. Then I can divide both sides by 2x. Then I can divide both sides by 2x. So I get y dy equal to 1 minus x over 2x dx. Next, take integral on both sides. I get integral of y dy equal to integral of 1 minus x over 2x dx. Next, take antiderivative on both sides. On the left side, if I take antiderivative, I get y squared over 2. On the right side, how can we take antiderivative here? On the right side, 1 minus x over 2x, it can be rewrite as. Let me do the left side and right side individually. This can be rewrite as integral of 1 over 2x minus x over 2x. I can separate 1 over 2x minus x over 2x. Then 1 over 2x can be rewrite as half of 1 over x. x over 2x can be rewrite as 1 over 2 dx. Next, take antiderivative. We get half of ln of x minus half of x plus c. That's the left side and that's the right side. So we have y squared over 2 equal to half of ln of x minus half of x plus c. Next, I can multiply both sides by 2. I can multiply both sides by 2. I get y squared equal to ln of x minus x plus 2c. Since c is a constant, 2c is another constant. We can leave it as c. Since c is a constant, 2c is another constant. We can leave it as c. Next, in order to get y by itself, in order to get y by itself, take square root on both sides. In order, get, in order to get y by itself, take square root on both sides. We get square root of ln of x minus c minus x plus c. When we take square root, we must always add plus or minus sign. When we add square root, we must always add. When we take square root, we must always add plus or minus sign. So the answer is y equal to either positive or negative square root of ln of x minus x plus c. That's the solution to this differential equation. Next example, dy over dx equal to x over y squared, where y of 0 is 1. Here, this expression, y of 0 equal to 1, this is, called, this is called the initial condition of this differential equation. This is called the initial condition of this differential equation. In general, in the solution of a differential equation, there's a constant, either it's c or k, there's a constant. In the solution of a differential equation, there's a constant. It's either c, k, or some other letters. If an initial condition is provided, if an initial condition is provided, we must find a constant. For the final solution, we must find a constant. If an initial condition is provided, for the final answer, we must find a constant. 
Let's solve the differential equation first. Then I'll show you how to find a constant. First of all, let's try to separate s and y. I can first of all multiply both sides by dx. So I get dy equal to x over y squared times dx. Next, I can multiply both sides by y squared. If I multiply both sides by y squared, I get y squared dy equal to x dx. Next, integral on both sides. I get y squared, integral of y squared dy equal to integral of x dx. Then take anti derivative. We get y cubed over 3 on the left side. On the right side, we get x squared over 2 plus c. Then solve the equation for y. Solve the equation for y. In order to solve for y, I can first of all multiply both sides by 3. I get y cubed equal to 3x squared over 2 plus c. Next, I can take cube root on both sides. If I take cube root on both sides, I get y equal to cube root of 3x squared over 2 plus c. That's the solution to this differential equation. But there's a constant. But there's a constant in the solution. If initial condition is provided, if initial condition is provided, we must use the initial condition to find a constant c. So here, y of 0 equal to 1. y of 0 equal to 1. That means when s is 0, y is 1. y of 0 equal to 1. That means when y is, when s is 0, y is 1. This, this initial condition means when s is 0, y is 1. So plotting 0 for x, plotting 1 for y. Solve the equation for c. If I plug in, I get 1 equal to cube root of 3 times 1 squared over 2 plus c. If I plug in x and y, I get this. Next, solve the equation for c. I can first of all cube both sides. I get 1 cube equal to 3 times 1 squared over 2 plus c. And we know that 1 cube is 1. 3 times 1 squared over 2 is 3 half. Next, subtract 3 half from both sides. Subtract 3 half from both sides. I get negative 1 over 2 equal to c. Once I know what c is, plotting c here. Once I know what c is, plotting c here. So the final answer is y equal to cube root of 3x squared over 2 minus 1 over 2. That's the final answer to this differential equation. That's the final answer to this differential equation. Next example, y prime equal to 1 plus y squared, where y of 0 is 0. How can we solve this differential equation? First of all, let's read y prime as dy over dx. Next, try to separate x and y. I can first of all multiply both sides by dx. I get dy equal to 1 plus y squared dx. Next, I can divide both sides by 1 plus y squared. I get 1 over 1 plus y squared dy equal to dx. Next, take integral on both sides. Take integral on both sides. I get integral of 1 over 1 plus y squared dy equal to integral of dx. Then take antiderivative on both sides. On the left side, if I take antiderivative, I get inverse tension of y. On the right side, if I take antiderivative, I get x plus c. Next, try to get y by itself. I can apply tension on both sides. Apply function tension on both sides. I get y equal to tension of x plus c. Now, if the initial condition is provided, we must find a constant c. If the initial condition is provided, 
we must always find a constant c. So this initial condition here it means when s is zero, y is zero. When s is zero, y is zero. This initial condition it means when s is zero, y is zero. Now plugging zero for x, plugging zero for y, solve the equation for c. I get zero equal to tension of zero plus c, which means zero equal to tension of c. Tension of C is zero. If we look at the graph of tension, we can see that tension occurs zero. Tension occurs zero at zero. Pi two pi and so on. On the other side, tension occurs zero at negative pi. and negative 2 pi, and so on. So, since tension of C is 0, that means C could be 0 plus or minus pi, plus or minus 2 pi, and so on. Here, since there are more than one solution for C, for the final answer, we say y equal to tension of x plus k pi, where k could be any integers, since there are more than one solutions, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, so in general we write k pi, k could be any integers. That's an answer to this differential equation. Next example, e to the power of y times y prime equal to s squared, where y of 1 equal to 0. How can we solve this differential equation? Let's first of all rewrite y prime as dy over dx. I try to separate x and y. So I can first of all multiply both sides by dx. If I multiply both sides by dx, I get s squared times dx on the right side. Next, take integral on both sides. Once we separate s and y, take integral on both sides. I get integral of e to the power of y, dy, equal to integral of x squared, dx. Next, take the antiderivative on both sides. On the left side, if I take antiderivative, I get e to the power of y. On the right side, if I take antiderivative, I get s cubed over 3 plus c. Next, we try to get y by itself. So I can apply ln on both sides. I get ln of e to the power of y equal to ln of s cubed over 3 plus c. So here on the, on the left side, ln cancels e. I get y by itself. I get y equal to ln of s cubed over 3 plus c. Next, try to use the initial condition to find its constant c. This initial condition means when s is 1, y is 0. This initial condition means when s is 1, y is 0. So plugging s and y, solve for c. Plugging s and y, solve for c. You get 0 equal to ln of 1 to the power of 3 over 3 plus c. 
one cube over three is one third. In order to solve for C, apply E on both sides. I get E to the power of zero equal to E to the power of ln of one third plus C. Here on the left side, E to the power of zero is one. On the right side, E cancels to ln. We get one third plus C. Next, subtract one third from both side. I get C equal to two third. So C is two third. For the final answer, plug in two third for C. So for the final answer, Y is L n of x over three, x cube over three plus two third. That's a solution to this differential equation. So in general, if an initial condition is provided, we must always find a constant C. Next example, y prime equal to y times sine x, where y of pi over 2 is 4. How can we solve this different differential equation? First of all, we write y prime as dy over dx. Next, try to separate x and y. Try to write x on one side and y on the other side. I can first of all multiply both sides by dx. So you get dy equal to y times sine x dx. Next, I can divide both sides by y. I get 1 over y dy equal to sine x dx. Next, take integral on both sides. The integral of 1 over y dy equal to integral of sine x dx. Next, take anti derivative on both sides. Take anti derivative on both sides. On the left side, I get ln of y. On the right side, if I take anti derivative for sine x, I get negative cosine x plus c. Next, solve an equation for y. Get y by itself. In order to get y by itself, we need to eliminate ln first. So apply e to both sides. If I, if I apply e to both sides, I get e to the power of ln of y equal to e to the power of negative cosine of x plus c. Here on the left side, e cancels ln. We get absolute value of y by itself. On the right side, since c is a constant, by the law of exponent, it can be rewrite as e to the power of negative cosine of x times e to the power of c. Since e to the power of c is a constant, you treat like constant in the form. You treat like constant in the form. Then, since absolute value of y equal to this expression, when I eliminate absolute value, y by itself could be either positive or negative. The inside, y by itself could be either positive or negative, e to the power of c times e to the power of negative cosine x. Then, since c is a constant, e to the power of c is a constant. Plus or minus e to the power of c is another constant. So I can write y equal to k times e to the power of negative cosine x, where k is plus or minus e to the power of c. Now, see if there's initial condition, we must use the provided initial condition to find constant c in the solution. Here, the constant is k. So find constant k in the solution. This initial condition says, when x is pi over 2, y is 4. When x is pi over 2, y is 4. So plotting s and y, solve for k. Plotting s and y, solve for k. I get 4 equal to k times e to the power of negative cosine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. e to the power of 0 is 1. So k is 4. 
for the final answer, plotting 4 for k. y equal to 4 times e to the power of negative cosine of x. That's the final answer to this differential equation.